Hey, pilots! Welcome to another exciting episode of War Robots Domination, a series of helpful gameplay tutorials designed to help highlight the tactics and strategies that I use to help tip the scales in my favorite game, War Robots. Each episode will feature a handful of battles along with helpful commentary that will provide insight as to what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. I'm your host, Gotcha Beacons, and I've been playing this awesome game for a few years now and I've learned a few tricks along the way that I'd love to share with y'all. You'll notice that although my hangar is fairly basic and at lower levels, I have been able to climb it up to Expert League, so I believe that you'll find my tactics will help you do more with less, which can be very helpful with today's economy in the game. I should also mention that this is my second account, so don't let my career profile stats fool you. This is actually my baby account, but it sends a great message to pilots who feel they need to chase the current meta in order to be competitive in battle, because you don't. Wise gameplay can usually overcome any fancy gimmick, a death button is a great example. It can still melt just about any build, and its heritage stems all the way back to nearly the beginning of the game. It's all about knowing when to use it and how to use it. So, without further ado, I invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy today's episodes while I walk you through my gameplay tactics and share with you my mindset in battle. I hope you find it entertaining, helpful, and fun to watch. I think you will. I'm going to call this battle Churn and Burr, and boy is it ever, enjoy my friends in the background and status as they play their awesome song, War. All right, guys, so we are in Rome. This is the, the, the closed map deck, a lot of faster, um, more knife fighter type builds in this hangar here, um, and it's all about getting around the structures, capping them blue, and uh, keeping it going. Um, and uh, I'll tell you what, you know, in uh, Rome, it's the best way to go. Uh, the range bots don't really do as well. Uh, there's only a few range vantage points on the map. And from those places, you really can't, you know, focus on too many or support too many beacons. So um, a closed map deck is how I kind of term this one. But that's a, a better fit for, uh, for maps like Rome, Moon, Dreadnought. Uh, there's another one, um, you know, and uh, let's see, Power Plant's another good one that you want to have more of a closed map deck on. So um, that was Whiz Bang, my first guy. This is Stinger. Uh, this is my little Strider. I haven't put him in the the, the, the deck for a while, um, so I thought I would and uh, give him a little run. He's got Vipers and Shredders on him, um, and uh, they're, they're kind of similar in range and style of, 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 of damage, so that's kind of why I want to use them both. Um, I would prefer to have Halos, to be honest with you. Um, and uh, it looks like Stinger is going to get ready to take out from that uh, Falcon. So um, this is uh, Diablo, and he's my little Loki. We are down on Beacon so far that I really had to kind of get us help get us caught back up, or we're just going to lose from uh, Beacon advantage. I think I have a pretty tanky team on my side, but you know what? If they're all tanking around, they're not grabbing a lot of Beacons. And this is another reason why you want on my closed map deck, most of these guys are faster because you still got to keep them blue. Slow moving bots don't really help you. You know, fast moving bots aren't necessarily just guys on the ground. Obviously, all the um, dragon bots are fast too in their flight. They're fast. Um, but Diablo is all about keeping them blue. And so what I'm doing right now is, you know, a couple things you can do when you're running a, a Loki. Um, by having what's happening here like that specter he came over here to kind of counter me turning it blue but well, what's happened now is he's stuck back here he's he, you know that's a that's a, a specter with a bunch of damage abilities but he can't go uh, or I'll turn his blue so he's stuck there so now I'm gonna go over here to just another available beacon and I'm looking around the field right now looking for beacons that I can turn um, where it needs my help they don't really need me over there because there's already a couple of my mates over there I'm gonna go back over here and kind of help maintain this one see he's how that specter came over here he's trying to turn it back i'm not going to let him i'm going to hang out here until he's got too many buddies here then now he's got too many buddies and they can get me so i'm going to go ahead and leave because there's an uncapped unguarded beacon over there and that's what i do yeah i'm going to let that one behind me turn blue or turn red but now i'm going to cap this one and by capping this one here now it's going to bring more reds back over there to re-liberate it and so another thing you're doing as you're turning them blue um is you are you're kind of focused or forcing them to move around the field because if they don't liberate it, they're going to lose. So <clears throat> when they're having to liberate a beacon that's far across the field, that means they're not attacking your men. And it also means that maybe they're turning your back on your mates who can um, do some damage on them. So in the long run, it starts to wear them down. And that's what you're going to see here. Churn and burn. You know, that's all I'm doing. I'm basically churning through. Look at, hey, look at, look. 
hey, Loki's got some guns on him. Look at that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, oh, I forgot to turn my stealth back on. Look at, they're shooting at me. I forgot to turn my stealth back on. I was running with my guns drawn. <laughs> no wonder he died. So this is um, Buzzkill. He buzzes, then he kills you. Now, I put a Pulsar on him. I took um, I took that uh, that that other Scourge that I had on him. I, put, I took it off, and I put it on a... Um, on a, uh, well, you're gonna see him here in a bit. I have, I have an Ares, but this is um, a buzz kill. He buzzes and he kills you. Um, the pulsars are still about the same range and they're pretty good. So here's my Ares. See, I got two Scourges and two Marquis. Similar in range, a little bit different in the energy out weaponry output. Um, but um, he does a pretty good job, and he's kind of my last out bot here. Um, and uh, as you can see, um, the beacon bar is a little at our disadvantage. Um, they are starting to run out of uh, bots, so we're getting to the end of a battle where we could mech them out. Um, and my little Loki runs earlier on kind of is are kind of paying off now because we're finally starting to catch up. If I hadn't gone around like I did with my uh, Diablo, um, we probably would have lost by now. Uh, our, you know, the beacon bar would have uh, been at our disadvantage. But because I was helping, able to keep the, the beacons uh, maintained, it allowed us to do chip away and turn and burn through um, the reds. And that's part of the game as well. So you can see I had uh, 10 beacons, but a lot of my guys had a lot of damage and a lot of kills, and it finally mecked them out. So it did pay off in the in the long run. But again, if I wasn't keeping them blue, we wouldn't have been able to last that long because the Reds were doing a great job of keeping the beacons uh, blue. So there you go. Great pilots on both sides. Um, it's a good lesson to kind of keep a monitor on that. Fill in where you need. If you got a strength bot for uh, one way or another, make sure you're out there using it. And if you see your name, thanks for the game. Peace out. I'm going to go this battle, decisions, decisions, and it's full of them, guys. Enjoy my friends in the background and status as they play their awesome song, November. All right, so this is Canyon, and I got the old guard in here. You know, Major Payne, he loves the Canyon. Those uh, Triple Zeus Furies, um, they do a great job. I normally walk them over to this uh, far berm that's I'm almost facing it right now uh, and tuck up against there, um, but... In this open, I just saw a lot of different looks from the uh, Reds that made it seem like that might not be the best place to, to open up at. Once I crossed over there, there was a lot of good long-range um, uh, so, uh, weapons on the uh, Reds, and I probably would have been chipped away to nothing if I tried to make my way over there. So I'm trying to do what I can from this little spot right here. Um, I, they're already, uh, you know, pushed right up into the center here. And, um, and they're guarding it pretty well. Our guys are kind of spread out. I can't really see what the rest of my mates are doing. But the Reds are cer certainly coming on strong. Um, not only are they grabbing center, but all of our guys are kind of back, back a ways. Um, and so we're not really pressing them uh, to give them much of a threat. It takes a group effort, guys. You can't expect one guy to run in the center to do it. Um, and, you know, I got a guy in the back over here to my left. Uh, kind of guarding that back rear um, and picking away at that hover over there. Um, but they're they're just coming on in as they want. And we're not really um, aggressively acting as a group. Um, uh, and that's okay. <clears throat> you never know how these things are going to pan out. But uh, with a lot of reds clumped up around the center there, uh, they're guarding it very, very tightly. And we're just not giving them a, a much of a, of a threat there. So I'm going to take Frick. He's my uh, death button raven. I'm going to try to um, eliminate what's going on in the center of the field there. Um, he got rid of one guy, but he got taken out by that Al June. Um, and uh, that was a, a decision uh, to risk a guy and pretty much sacrifice run. Hopefully my mates can move on in there and uh, help hold that center. Now, I'm going to try to target their back beacon. It's going to do a couple things. I may or may not even get it. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the reds away from center. One of the ways you do that is you threaten one of their other beacons and make them kind of redirect their focus, their attention, their firepower away from you. I didn't quite time it right. This guy's pretty good. Um, and he's using a phase ship quite uh, well. And uh, I didn't even, very, even get a big threat in there. But they're away from the center, enough where we can probably go in there and maybe do some damage. Um, there is a couple guys in there, but we're starting to, uh, you know, we're starting to press on into that center. They got it back, but I'm going to take my traditionalist Falcon, um, and uh, there's not a lot of, you know, firepower in him, but he's very durable. So he can go here and hold this one. And again, this I call this decisions, decisions, because it's all about, you know, what should you do? I made a decision to take Frack, 
my Russian death button right into the back there didn't quite pay off. Now we got it. Now we got a whole bunch of guys down here. I think we're doing a pretty good job, um, and we certainly have enough, uh, you know, manpower. But so do they, and they're coming back and trying to threaten it. So it's a matter of kind of going from one side of this little center thing to the other, uh, risk taking damage, but also trying to be in their face because I got a traditional falcon for a reason. They're tough as nails. Now we got a four to one beacon advantage, and we might start chipping away back at that uh, beacon bar if we can maintain it. But I'm also looking at, you know, red uh, arrows, uh, you know, in my side screen, and I know that our guys need to do something because they've already got one back. I don't know what they capped back, but they did. And, um, decisions, decisions. What should I do? Should I stay here? Do I have enough guys to stay with me? Should we go after a, another beacon of theirs? That guy's going back to our back beacon. Is there enough people there? Well, I've got this guy helping me hold the center, and I see that guy heading up toward the red. So I went ahead and dropped out of my, um, my uh, uh, my traditionalist falcon to try to go and help uh, get that center be or that back beacon guarded, but then my guy left too, or maybe he died. But all I know is now we're down at a four to one beacon disadvantage, and we're down on beacon bar. That was probably not a good decision on my tread valve. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have relied on my team to do it. But we're not on comms. We're not able to do it. But it was probably a bad decision. Uh, you know, I make decisions all the time based on the field, uh, where reds are, where my mates are, and that sort of thing. The reds are just playing a very good game. Um, I'm trying to get this one back. I know my mates are up there to my right getting that one back, uh, giving us a, a, a you know, back to a, a big advantage. Maybe coming around was not a good idea here because it allowed that guy to cap that one just for a second. I'm getting it back, but every second counts right now. Those those beacon bars are starting to count down with the last minute. Now we got them at a run, but not really. Um, we need to get this last one back. Will we get it? I don't know. A lot of my decisions were just slivers of uh, beacon bar here and there, but that probably was the defining moment when I hopped out of my traditionalist falcon to help the back. I probably shouldn't have done that, and in doing so, I think it cost us just enough beacon Beacon bar where we lost. Decisions, decisions are out there, guys, all throughout the battle. It's it's tough to always know exactly what a crystal ball would have been helpful, right? But you know what? Try to make good decisions. Try to make, be very, very aware of what your mates are capable of doing and where they're at. And sometimes it's a split second uh, decision that you know can swing either way. That could have worked out, but when it doesn't, you sure do see it at the end. There, it was a close battle. Great pilots on both sides. It was still a fun one to be part of. We always learn a learning lesson here, guys. If you see your name, thanks for the game. Peace out. They call this battle gung ho, and <laughs> you'll explain why in a second. Enjoy my friends in the background and status as they play their awesome song Woodish. All right, so this is this episode's Beacon Rush Battle. I always open up with a, a very fast bot here. This is my, this is Frick. He's my death button raven. The double jump gets him right to the center. But I missed my jump. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, the important thing about um, Beacon Rush is you got to rush in and go after it. Gung Ho <laughs> refers to unthinkingly enthusiastic, especially when it talks about um, uh, taking part in a fight or a combat. That is exactly the mindset that needs to go in to your beacon rush uh, methods, is you need to be enthusiastically unthinking <laughs> when it, and eager to come in and take part in this fight. That's the only way to play Beacon Rush. No range bots, no calculated stand back and see what happens. This is all about rushing in and doing the battle unthinkingly and enthusiastic. And that's what's gonna win the battle. What's, what's Diablo doing right now? Is he running across the field to go after their back beacon? He was going to, but then he saw an unguarded beacon right in the center, the most important beacon on Yamato. So he went for it, and now he's getting right inside shield. He's doing it again. He got taken out, but we're not done yet. No, no, no. Uh, now we're going to bring in an Ares. This is my Ares. He's got um, pulsars, and he's got marquees in him. And I'm back up here again to take it back, this, hold this center. And again, we need to be <laughs> eagerly unthinking and enthusiastic about fighting and combat. That is all about Beacon Rush, guys. Never sit back, never be calculated, rush on in there. That is what wins on Beacon Rush. I never teach this for domination, but in domination, you have time, you have patience. 
But what happens with Beacon Rush is if you take time and patience, they can rally, they can come on back. But if you push, push, push with your gung-ho attitude, that's the only way you're gonna win in this game. And it works. Look, they're coming in gung-ho with, with a whiz-bang there. I rushed on in. You do not sit back and let them have that one. You can't. Because as soon as you do, you're op they're opening up a portal where they're going to flood your area. You can't let the beacon go. You need to sacrifice the body. You need to be enthusiastically eager. Now, I'm not getting up where I can get taken out. Don't need to, but I'm waiting for anyone to come up. And now, gung-ho! <laughs> you get up there. That that's an invader. Who cares? Gung-ho on that guy. You shoot him, you take him down, and you come back, and you wait for the next one. And you know, now this is a kind of a calculated thing. I'm not rushing after the beacon. We don't want to, because right now they're coming in hard. So we need to come back and be patient when it comes to that. But you need to be ready to eagerly come and enter, <laughs> eagerly, unthinkingly, <laughs> be energetic about going in and facing battle. Now, they are starting to fade back. I'm kind of seeing what they're doing. And if I see them hanging back, then we're going to rush on in. Right now, they're starting to mech out. You see only three heads uh, there on the on the left or the right side over there. So it is time, I think, to start pressing. Well, some of my mates already are, but you see, they're getting to get taken out. So there's no reason to get crazy. But um, with the beacon bar where it is and with their numbers starting to dwindle, I'm going to go ahead and get gung -ho. Now I saw that was an Ares. No reason to press him with it when you can't do any damage. So I'm going to shoot from a distance. I held, still have range on that guy back there. He jumped out of the way, but I'm going to go ahead and get back up here and I'm going to go ahead and um, take him out because I do have range on that and now I'm going to go focus on that beacon and I'm probably going to go a little gung-ho on them because we've got this one ran and why not let's go have some fun let's let's finish this battle the way we started it all gung-ho and all I'm going to go ahead and take one guy out I'm going to get taken out that's okay he's geared down to you and your friend and we just about got it mecked out and uh and that's a nice green going to be a nice green banner at the end guys when you play beacon rush remember you have to have that gung-ho mentality unthinkingly enthusiastic and eager especially when it comes to taking a uh, fight or combat so that's what you need to have going into your beacon rush mode have a good uh, fast knife fighter assassin type builds um, never hang back not even one range bot in there and uh, there you go good pilots on both sides that was a whole lot of fun hope you learned something there if you see your name thanks for the game peace out well, friends, that just about wraps it up for another episode. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw and were able to take something you learned and use it in battle. I add content to my YouTube channel almost daily, so please stop by when you're able and check out the fresh new material. Or just click on an old episode and maybe catch another tip that'll help you up your game. If you like what you see, please tap on the red subscription button and then tap the bell to be notified when new episodes are released. It would also be helpful if you could make a comment about the video. Whether it's an example of how the episode helped you, or maybe additional advice to help elaborate on the tactics I shared, or even constructive comments that'll help clarify something I might have missed. It's all good and greatly appreciated. Finally, this game is full of challenges and can create frustration for some who are simply trying to have fun with this awesome game. My goal is to provide you all with helpful information and help reduce the frustration and increase the fun. So, if you feel these videos are helping you, please share them with a friend, someone who you think might benefit from them. Well, that's about it for today, guys. As always, keep them blue out there, and I hope to see you on the battlefield. Make sure you're having fun, though, because if you're not, you're doing it wrong. I love you all for your support. Play well. Peace out.